Okay, water as we know it is a basic need of survival. It's a medium in which life exists essentially, and that could be why Earth is 70% water. Now, 97% of that water available is salt water. Unfortunately, we can't drink it because our kidneys can only work with fluids with a lower salt concentration. If a person were to consume salt water, they would eventually die from dehydration. In that case, humans have no choice but to resort to the fresh water in lakes and other similar water bodies, especially aquifers as well. Now, out of the 3% that is left, some fresh waters have been rendered useless due to pollution and industrial purposes. Most of the rest are stuck in glaciers and icebergs. Then what do we have left? That's a priceless question. How does approximately 7 billion people survive on this planet? The bad news is, not all of us actually do. Now, this closely relates to the distribution of drinking water among the vast continents. The problem first starts with the governments. They've sold our water rights to big water companies solely for economic purposes. As these companies grow in size, such as Dasani, the harder it is to regain control to live sustainably along with the planet. Economically, privatized sectors can monopolize or take full control of a country's water supply. This is achieved through false advertising, eliminating competitors, and creating fear against tap water. And yet, one third of all bottled water is tap water, statistically. Water should be a basic right, and people shouldn't need to reach for their pockets for something as necessary for survival. That's the problem. Water is not a human right. The only thing these companies are after is profit, which translates to higher prices and inferior services to consumers. Invasive extraction of water from local sources upsets the ecological balance, resulting in damages to the hydrological cycle, of course. The major idea is that water is being depleted from an area of high freshwater concentration to another area of the world. The displacement of water from one ecosystem to another is the key idea. All plant life dry up and become brittle, the soil cannot be used for agriculture, and land masses descend because of empty aquifers. The area with excess water can potentially become a wasteland as well. Then where does it go? Sewage goes back into local water bodies relative to where it was used. This continuous process gears towards desertification and the loss of precious fresh water. In summary, the World Bank has predicted that by the year 2025, two-thirds of the world's population will have water shortages. Increases in population and the limited supply of clean, fresh water gives multinational corporations opportunities to take advantage of hundreds of billions of dollars. One thing that most people don't know is that the world is desertifying very quickly. We are becoming a desert and there's nowhere to go in the world to get away from this. They've already mapped out what are going to be the most intense areas of potential conflict. When the water system doesn't work, then the civilization goes. This has become the most precious thing on Earth. We need the political will, and that political will is not going to come from the top, it's going to come from the bottom up. But we're fighting for the people that are going to use it in the future, our kids and their kids. If we don't do something to save it, what are they going to have? We are not talking about potential change. We are talking about blood being spilled on the streets. If money is more important than water, where are we? Wherever serious people have serious needs, we have the generation of water.